What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fastest Rising Podcast and all of pro wrestling. Welcome to the Tuck Your Chin Podcast. We have a huge episode today. First, I'm going to bring in my co-hosts. First, I'm going to bring in my man, Antoine. What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome to the Tuck Your Chin Podcast. We're interviewing the great Kid Osborne here. It's great to to be here for another episode. Let's do this thing. Of course, of course, man. And then we got to bring in the plug as usual, Mr. Steep. You know what it is, guys. Tuck Your Chin, Fastest Rising Podcast in all sports. Entertainment professional wrestling. Now we're gonna throw it over to our lucky guest over here, Chaos. Kit, oh, man, I'm, I'm I'm great and I'm lucky. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're the man of the hour right what now, compliment? my friend. You're you're the man of the hour. Uh, so let's just get right into questions, uh, my friend, if that's cool with you. Yeah, let's get right into it. Yeah. So, uh, when did you decide you wanted to be a pro wrestler? Um, I. I started, I started training in 2008, uh, but I wanted to be a professional wrestler since, I mean, since I was a kid and I was watching the WWF in your house with my cousins, you know, uh, during the summer, you know, I've always wanted to do it and probably ever, any time I would ever be bad in school or you know, something wrong. I'm like my takeaway. All I did was just contribute to me to do it as a career. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's fun, dude. Watching and wrestling. Antoine, go for uh, it. Yeah. Dude. Uh, I mean, it changes it. everything. You know, the yeah. To, after I started training, the the whole the whole game was changed. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you don't even you don't even watch wrestling the same way. Everything is just different. You know, obviously, I look at fans differently. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Antoine, go for it, dude. All right. Who, do you, who, who did you idolize growing up when you, when you was watching wrestling? Um, when I was a kid and, and even up until he retired uh, was, was Shawn Michaels. Um, you know, if my hair and my every facial expression I make and my entire demeanor didn't give it away. Um, but then when I, when I started watching indie wrestling, when I, when I went to a, um, I went to a show, uh, for the first time and it wasn't, you know, a WWF and it, and it didn't, and it wasn't watching WCW or ECW on TV. Uh, it was guys like, uh, Nick Gage, um, Uh, Nick Gage and, and uh, Ashley, I mean, they were both different and, you know, they stuck out and like the realism uh, that I got, like the, the raw emotion that I got from, from guys like Gage, you know, and I mean, he was really intimidating, you know, when I was like 14, you know, I mean, now I know him and I, I mean, I think he's just a big pussy and then he's, uh, yeah, he's fake, but uh, you know, that's, that's just me. And I know that he, Really, you know, he's he's not really. Yeah, yeah, man. Speak. Intimidating at all. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but, uh, he's, he's just, I decided to get in the ring, and and I went to, they advertised for um, training, and I was about 17 or so, and then I knew it. Like I I got to do this. Like I that's this is what I. Um, Because I definitely wasn't going to outgrow wrestling. I never planned on it, and I didn't think I would, but I I definitely thought that that I was missing something in my life, and, uh, you know, and and that was it. And then I started training, and, uh, I mean, I got my ass handed to me in the beginning. I mean, CZW as a whole, uh, looking back at it, like, it was was good training with Drew Gulak and everything, but, um, you know, I mean, but CZW as a whole was a waste of time. Um, but, you know, Nick Gage was one of those guys that uh, that really motivated me to want to do it. 
Yeah. Steve? When training to become a professional wrestler, what was the biggest adversity you faced and how did you overcome it? The biggest... Well, say that again? When you were training to be a professional wrestler, the biggest challenge, adversary that you faced and how did you overcome that, you know, that obstacle? Uh, well, when I was training, um, like we're looking like 2009, 2010, 2011, like during that time, you know, like I was, you know, I mean, I'm not a big guy, but I mean, I didn't work out and uh, I, I tried, you know, taking it as serious as I could. I was just finishing high school. And, you know, I, I thought that I was I was really retaining a lot because, I mean, during that time, I really was the only new student, you know, and there were guys like Adam Cole in the class and and Joe Gacy and Alex Cologne and, you know, people like Drew Gulak teaching me. So, you know, everything is in my favor. Um, but the adversity I faced was all about my size, because during that time, you know, guys like like me and, and, you know, for example, people that are, are smaller and, and, and thinner, like a Jordan Oliver were never taken seriously. You know, we were just, I was just a guy that, you know, would, uh, I would just get beat up. Like, and that was it. Like I wasn't allowed to get any offense in and, and training also took a lot before you ever, you know, were ever allowed to do anything. And, you know, it's stuff like that is, is shit. And, and I'm glad it's not really it's not like that anymore. Uh, and the people that, you know, that that, you know, that uh, that that still live by that, you know, these vets, uh, you know, they're a dying breed. And there's a there's a reason for that. Uh, yeah, you know, they, it definitely held me back a lot. And I definitely gave up for a good amount of time. And I finished school and. You know, I got my real life in, in order and everything outside of wrestling in order so that I could take this serious. And then when I came back and started being really dedicated and dedicated and everything towards it, it was a lot different. And things were changing. And, and also I changed and I got, you know, I matured. So that was probably it. It was my size and, and the time in which I started training. Yeah. So what got you into wrestling as a fan? Not 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 the business, but like as a fan. When um I was four or five years old, I would go to my cousin's place and uh in during the summer and they were into it and it was like something I've never seen before. And I mean, dude, it was it was so cool, you know, to and I remember watching Sean was one of those guys and and uh and and british bulldog and stuff and and those are the guys that i remember seeing and thinking uh wow these guys are they're so colorful and they're animated but they're real like these are real people it wasn't a cartoon it wasn't it, it was completely different and nothing that i've ever seen in, in my life like the undertaker scared the shit out of me uh <laughs> and and for every good reason and like and it just it just was so different and it stuck out and then as the as older as i got for the older i got the you know the more and more i'm learning about the the product and and i'm i'm liking different things like like at first it was the characters and then it was you know and then it became the stories that were being told that i was so locked in on as as the fan and then by the time i ever realized that this stuff isn't it was already beyond that and I and I was already smartened up to the point where well it doesn't have to be real it, it, it's not about that it's about that you know they um, uh, expand disbelief and every you know as I got older it was something new about wrestling that I fell in love with and then when I started doing it I mean that was just that that changes everything that that's me now as the the author you know of of you know, and the producer of every story and show, and I get to tell it, you know, and then that changes everything. So, so, uh, so little things, you know, like something as simple as a character and the characters that got me into it, but the stories and then being able to tell the stories are what kept me in it. Yeah, yeah, Antoine. All right. So as you seen as you as you watched wrestling growing up and you seen how wrestling was then, 
how has the wrestling landscape changed? You know, with na- compared to now than than it was. You know, when you when you f- was first watching it growing up. Uh, compared to now, um, I think fandom has changed. I th- think it's good and bad. Uh, I mean, listen, as a as a performer, you know, my job is to. Uh, we all get it. Like wrestling's not fucking real. You know, I'm not I'm not the first one to say that. And Jim Cornette already blocked me. So I, I can I can say that and, and be OK with, uh, you know, I ain't I ain't ruining the business. But my job as a performer is different than I think it was for them back then is is that um, my job is to make those that know it's fake get so involved in the story that by the end of my match, they don't care whether or not it's real or not. They're, they're so intrigued by the story that we're telling. And, and you know, even the athleticism involved and, and the pain that I go through and that they look at all of those, those aspects of it, that it changes their mindset. And it's not anymore, you know, like, well, this stuff's not real to holy shit, I didn't think it was going to pull that off, you know, or, you know, or, you know, fuck him. Like, you know, how dare he call me a, you know, a guardrail crosser or a blogger, stuff like that. And, you know, and then part of that, of course, is real. And then part of it isn't. But at the end of the day, the fact that I get you 100 percent locked in on my story that I'm telling and my character and, and who I am, then, you know, that's that's what does it for me. <laughs> yeah. Steep. That's so I think that's what that's what's changed in wrestling, and, and I think you know, yeah, I, I think there are fans that are too involved. You know, there's too many of the uh, the Dave Meltzers in the world, um, and and I don't think that they they don't need to they don't need to exist. You know, like I don't really need to hear what some blogger, you know, thinks about uh, you, you know, thinks about why. <laughs> trying to think like why the undertaker doesn't need to wrestle anymore and it's like dude shut the fuck up because at the end of the day you're gonna buy the ticket and watch him because it might you might think it's the last time you ever see him so guess what as he keeps doing that he keeps taking your money you dipshit so you know and you're gonna be more and more locked in because at the end of the day that guy is the dead man or is the american badass and, and you don't know what he's going to be, but you sure as fuck are locked in and you care during that entire match from the beginning to end on what he's going to do and what he's going to and what he's going to do next. And the only time you ever act like you're in the business and you know what's going to happen and what should happen is when the is before the match happens and after the match. But it's never during. So, you know, that's what I that's what I think is different. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I, I sure as fuck. I don't know what's going to happen, and, I, and I, I'm in the business, and I'm not going to tell anybody whether The Undertaker should, you know, uh, hang his boots up, and I sure as fuck ain't going to tell him what to do in his match, and I, I'm just as, in, I'm just, I get just as intrigued watching that son of a bitch take eight hours to walk to the ring as anybody else, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, when you were having your first match in front of a live audience, what was the atmosphere like? What was it like? What was your mindset like coming out that curtain and hearing, you know, all those people knowing that you're not going to get your chance to perform? Uh, I felt like really honored to be honest with you. Uh, I, my first real match and, and when I say real match in front of like a really big crowd and it was at, uh, the 2300 arena, um, you know, I, I wrestled with Gran Akuma. All I did be exactly what, you know, I didn't like about wrestling and, and what was so difficult was I just got my ass beat. I just jobbed to him. And, but it was still, you know, an honor because I thought, well, I'm young. This is what happens when you're, when you're, uh, you're first starting out, you don't get any offense in. It's not, I didn't think it was about size or whatever, or believability, which, come on, let's get fucking honest. Like, what's believable in wrestling anymore? Uh, and whatever was, you know? Like, I keep bringing up The Undertaker, but he's a perfect example of everything. It's like, guys, everybody knows he's not dead, but, man, when he turns and looks at that referee, when the referee's trying to get him out of the corner, 
who the fuck are you gonna who do you think is gonna <laughs> do you believe how scared the ref is because I do I like I I just I that was that was a big honor was to be able to wrestle in front of that in that arena where that famous arena um and then and then 10 years later uh you know in 2020 uh, before you know everything went to shit, uh, I got the main event of uh, the arena, that same arena, which is you know a really sentimental place, and I got the main event it for the first fucking time, and I got to do it for a major wrestling company, MLW, and that's you know and that's amazing to me. So I look back at it now, and I'm I'm even more humbled by it. Uh, but then I can say, oh, even though 10 years went by and main event at that same building, that means so much to me. So no matter what it is I ever accomplish, you know, that's that's something I can put on my little checklist and say, well, how many of you motherfuckers did that? You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, dream matches, uh, people uh, signed to a company on the Indies, past, present, future. Um, there's a couple, I, I'll give you a few. Um, one of them I got to do, uh, and I mean, I'm, I'm proud of it, but I, I think Nick Gage, you know, like, like I said, he's one of, when I watched him, I saw that realism and that raw emotion that he had and I, and that pulled me in and that made me want to do it. And then when, when I finally got to wrestle him in uh, 2019, you know, that was a big deal for me. And and knowing who he is, and I didn't really back down, it was a real, uh, you know, anything that I was proud of. And, um, and going forward, of course, I'd like to do another one with him. And that's not blowing smoke up his ass, because he is a, bu- he's a pussy, and, and he's a bitch. And he's been a bitch for years. That bald piece of shit got fat. <laughs> And, and, you know, for somebody that, you know, robbed a bank, like you would have thought maybe the one time you would have wore a bandana would have been that time. But of course, no, no, a fucking moron. So he gets in shape, he comes back, he comes back and he's in shape. And then guess what happens? He got lazy. And that's what I got. I got the lazy, uh, I got the lazy gauge. So what I would like is for him to maybe pick up some weights uh, and get back to where he was, you know, do some CrossFit, stretch a little, I don't know, do yoga at his age, and then maybe get in there and he can have, like, a couple more with me. Um, you know, I, I obviously would love to wrestle Shawn Michaels. Uh, that's That is obviously would have been a, a major dream. Um, and then another person that I really liked was Stan Hansen, and the reason why I like Stan Hansen it's because him and I have absolutely nothing in common, you know? And I think that that would immediately make a good story. And it would, for me, it would, it, like, during his prime, would probably give me a really great injury to talk about. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that, that guy would be swinging for the fences. And I don't know how long I could take it, but I would certainly love to have that, uh, that, that chance. And, um, and then somebody else, uh, you know, it wasn't anybody that I ever thought. I don't know. I would say it's a dream match or anything, but but uh, it's one of the guys that I I got. You know, I, I definitely built like a good, you know, we were acquaintances, and I think we built like a, I know a pretty good re- friendship when we're both around at the same time, and and that's uh, 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 sorry about that. Uh, the, British, uh, British Bulldog Jr. You know, um, uh, Harry Smith. I, I think, you know, I, I love. I, I when I watch him wrestle, and then even that time I got in the ring with him, I can just see how he's a thinker in that ring, and he's and he's calm, and he cares about every every little thing that he does, and and I appreciate that, and and I certainly need to learn that myself. But he's one of those guys that I look. And because I think that it would just it would be uh, it would be an epic match and we would tell a great story. Yeah, Antoine. All right. Um, when you talking about wrestling, um, you know you you notice the landscape with, with ever since AEW has come along the scene, 
what do you what is your what, what is your honest opinion about you know AEW in terms of you know their the future and if you if you if you think you could if if there was a potential you know working you know promotion you would like to work for would it be considered them or would you or, or do you, would you look into like a lot of other options that's out there? Um, I I think AEW is awesome and I I love everything that they're doing with it. I think that the they're not. Like people compare it to like WCW just because it's on TNT and it's a big product that's going against WWE and it's it's not it's not like WWE or it's not like WCW it's it's a product that I think they're doing everything right and they have the funds to do it um, you know Chris Jericho and Cody Rhodes they 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 get it and they also know how to learn from the mistakes from everybody else in the past um, they. I think they have a great product. They have a great, uh, a great roster that is, it's that it's so different. Like every match is has a different personality in it, and I, I think it, it, you know, if you start watching from the beginning, then you want to watch every match until the end because it's just that, it's just that good. Um, I would love to wrestle for AEW. I know they're given opportunities to so many guys, especially during this time. Um, I don't, do I, do I think I deserve it? I mean, hell yeah, I think I deserve it. But, uh, but compared to like, I got to be able to, to really think that somebody like Matt Tremont is going to get an opportunity to wrestle for the TNT title against Cody Rhodes. And the, the fact that I, I really like, I, I am like 90, Five percent sure that that can that would have that's gonna happen, uh, and to even think that somebody like Matt Tremont, who is an awesome talent, but just to think that somebody like him is gonna be on a major television company like TNT and wrestling Cody Rhodes for that TNT title is just mind blowing, and no matter how much I believe that that's something that's a no brainer that should happen. That's not in, you know, the outside of the outside of the independent world would anybody ever fathom. So I think that's amazing. I think AEW is doing everything right. Um, and and I love them for it. Uh, for me, I would love to be a part of them. I'm still, you know, I would always love to be able to get that chance to wrestle for, you know, the company that I loved till I was since I was a kid uh, in WWE. But you know, right now, uh, it's just taken step by step. And uh, I've had a, an amazing opportunity with MLW. And I hope when all this, when everything clears, that I would get more, more of an opportunity with. Steve? What is the advice you would give to um, people who are about to begin wrestling training, like new up and coming wrestlers? Um, some of the advice that I'm about- and it was Drew Gulak who gave it to me, is, you know, essentially it's get all your priorities uh, in order. Um, And that meaning, like, hey, you know, if you don't have the funds to back you up, you know, make sure you have that job and make sure that you're, like, not I'm not saying, like, you're not a a struggling, starving artist. And that's a a fine thing. I think that that makes, that pushes you to, to, to succeed. But make sure that you have something to fall back on in case you get hurt, you know, or, you know, or, or if things just don't work out and you waste all this time. Um, I certainly, I started in, in, in high school and I was training then. And uh, that means that I was able to go every week, twice a week and train. I was able to get all that, you know, that those do pay, those dues being paid the, out of the way before I had a real life, you know, I don't have kids and I definitely don't want them. I can barely tie my own shoes. So I'm not saying <laughs> over here that I am some model person to live off. Of. I mean, first of all, I do deathmatch wrestling. So that, what does that tell you about me? Um, but I, I have my priorities in order. And I think that that's the one thing that the first bit of advice I'd give to somebody. And the other one is, you know, keep you know, your ears open and your mouth shut. Uh, because nobody cares what opinion you have. 
um, and also be humble and don't think that you deserve anything because nobody's owed anything. I don't think I ever, I don't, I certainly didn't get anything handed to me and I certainly didn't get anything, anything, I didn't earn anything in a, in a short amount of time, but that doesn't make me bitter. It just makes me understand that, Hey man, wrestling is different for everybody. Somebody might hit it right out of the ballpark right away. And then there are some that it takes a while and, and they need to, and they learn from their mistakes and, and they don't know who they are. I certainly didn't know who I was yet. And I think I do now to a, a certain degree, but I think I'm, I'm learning every step, every single day. And I think that's what a lot of people lack in doing. They get stubborn and, you know, and they don't want to learn because, you know, Oh, I did this for five years. I deserve this. It's like, nah, bitch, you don't deserve shit. And you actually deserve less for even saying that. Actually, I fucking hope you fail. And I have never hoped anybody failed more in my life. <laughs> so that's what I would have to say. Um, how did you come up with the name Kit Osborne? I didn't. It was Drew Gulak. <laughs> and he, he made me go to the ring to that. It wasn't it was a hey, what do you think of this name? Actually, no, 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 I'm sorry. Pardon me. It was that. It was, hey, what do you think of this name? And I'm like, eh. And he's like, well, that's your name. And I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> he was like, oh, by the way, uh, what do you think of the song Boys of Summer by the Ataris? I'm like, I don't really like that song. Oh, oh that sucks because that's going to be your theme music. And I was like, oh, all right. Hey, I mean. So, you know, <laughs> and at, now I'm that. I'm, now I love the name. I, I do. I, I like I like Kid Osborne and. I think it's different. It sticks out. People hear it. They go, what the fuck kind of name is that? And then, you know, they look me up. So. <laughs> How about the song? Did you, did you fall in love with the song yet? Boys of Summer? No. Oh. No, hell no, man. I, I just, you know, the second I was able to, like, you know, not have to keep the song, I, I changed it. Hey, good choice, man. Good choice. Antoine. All right. What was one? Of, what was some of your your be, some of your favorite matches you watched um, in wrestling growing up? Some of your favorites. Um. I, so when growing up, I mean, I I always loved the Sean versus Brett. Uh, I thought the WrestleMania match is great. I mean, because I was a, a fan of Sean, but I mean, and Brett, but uh, I, I like there i like the match at survivor series because i mean people talk about that still today and there's a reason why uh i like that match uh austin and the rock i mean really any match with austin in it because i just think that guy goes you know from zero to 100 from bell to bell and it's i can't i don't know how he does it uh and uh in indie wrestling you know, I, I again, I, I like I like watching I like watching Gage. I liked watching I like watching Drew Gulak now. Uh, I mean, I always like watching Drew, but I mean, another one of the like like how I uh, he's he just it, it never it just it's amazing to me that somebody with that like much adrenaline going through you can just think you know, think as if it's like he's playing chess, uh, but in real time. And it, and it just, first of all, it annoys the shit out of me because I, I haven't figured out how to do that. And then the other is like, I'm amazed by it. And I think it's awesome. Um, I like what in Andy Rez, I like watching my buddy, Tim Dodds and not because I'm friends with these guys or they train me, but because they're overall, like, they're just so good. Uh, Tim Dodds, um, is amazing. Sammy Callahan is just so much fun to watch. Uh, you know, and, and I like, I mean, everything in WWF, obviously I, I, I love the undertaker and I liked, I mean, people give it shit, but I, I like watching the undertaker try and wrestle an eight foot tall, uh, uh, Jay Gonzalez. Like, I just thought, I'm like, that's amazing. Like, how the fuck does, like, if you look at the story and you go, that guy He's a real life John. How the fuck did he do that? You know, then, you know, I, I like matches like that, you know, and, but, uh, you know, that's, that's what always got me, uh, were, were things like that. But I mean, Austin and, and, uh, and the rock were, was something that just blew my mind watching that live. Yeah. Uh, Steve. 
What is one match you had in the past that you would want to relive sometime in the future? Um, me and Dell, me and Mike Dell. There's like, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, uh, so you know, there's <laughs> riots good, and man. stuff in there's, there's like riot, there's riots and stuff going on. So uh, I can't, I don't even know how to get home. Oh shit! You know what? I'm on the, I'm on the fucking highway I right this now. Guy. And I don't even know what's going on here. Seriously, I have no idea. I'm about to get on this fucking AC Expressway, which is the opposite of where I'm trying to fucking go. <laughs> so let me just like, you know, I was trying to be like, oh, I can, I can drive and all this. And there's like a million cops at the, uh, the toll going, nah, not today, man. You're staying, you live in Jersey now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but. Anyway, uh, I think I'm, I'll be all right. Uh, oh, did you hear the question? <laughs> uh, Steve, Steve, you have to read. Oh, I asked him, um, what is one match you had in the past that you would want to relive sometime in the future? One match that you really enjoyed? That was the favorite match that you had. Um, You know, I, I would love, like, I like wrestling my friends. Um, I think Mike Dell is com- so underrated. Um. He's, uh, you know, one of the most underrated wrestlers out there. Uh, And I would love to be able to have uh, another match with him at a really big stage um, because, you know, he's he's just so super talented. And I recommend him to anybody. Uh, So with Mike Dell, um, uh, a relive. I mean, I would like I I would like to do another match with Gage. you know, and I think like anybody I ever had a match with when I just jobbed to them, whether it was like, uh, you know, Ego Fantastico, Robert Anthony and um, uh, and White, uh, who else? Uh, Akuma. So, yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of matches I would love to redo now than I did, you know, back then. Like I, Ace Austin and I always had a really great chemistry. And uh, we haven't worked in a couple of years, so I know that we would, you know, blow it out of the water. Um, you know, and I, I think with even since 2017, like my my and my, my entire style is completely different. Um, it's way different than, you know, anything I thought I was going to be uh, because I'm not I'm not just this Shawn Michaels wannabe anymore. I'm. You know, I, I get to do, I've done death matches and, and I, I would like to think that I'm like, a uh, you know, I can, I can kind of do anything. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Um, do you prefer working as a heel or a baby face? Uh, I like working as me. So I guess technically everybody would think that's a baby or a heel. <laughs> it's a baby face to me. Hey, baby face right now? I, 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 I yeah, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> Antoine. Um, did you grow up like, like in any wrestling factions? Oh, yeah, dude, I'm, I was always like an NWO guy. Look at this shit I just bought from, I just bought this for like 30 bucks. I'm an idiot for buying it for $30. I bought oh, this shit. Man. Oh, man, dude. I thought Hogan was the coolest looking son of a bitch on the planet wearing all that black and white and just like playing the <laughs> the world heavyweight championship as a guitar what an asshole <laughs> I loved it <laughs> Hollywood Hogan um when going through death matches and you have to do a dangerous spot when you're told you have to do a dangerous spot what's it like hearing that um I mean, like, I definitely dwell on it uh, for a while. I, uh, I'm never, you know, I, I, I think about that in particular spot the entire match. So I kind of sometimes let it get in my head a little. But then when I'm about ready to do it, I'm literally just saying to myself, eh, fuck it. You know, you had a good run. You know, all right. Well. And that, that's, that's literally what goes through my head. Um you know, and so, like, for example, uh, when I did the, the 
the trampoline spot. Uh, let me let me clarify. I am terrified of heights, <laughs> and I got told I'm doing that spot. I didn't get asked to do that spot, and uh, so I did that. Uh, and you know, I just kind of did it <laughs> without any real option. So that's usually how it goes. I, I'm like, there's some things I don't do, like I won't, I won't do. Um, but you know, most of the time, in my head, I just say, "Fuck it," you know, like this is why I'm doing this. This is a death match. Yeah, you know, this is a death match. So this is why I'm doing this. So uh, you know, if I'm not gonna go 100%, then it shouldn't go in at all. Yeah. Unless it depends on if I'm wrestling somebody really shitty. And I'm not getting paid enough because, uh, you know, I'll be honest right there. Like there's a red flags. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a uh, favorite finisher? Um, mine, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it was, it was the super kick. <laughs> I love that. Um, my favorite finisher of all time is the is stone cold stunner. I think it's the greatest move of all time. And a uh, rebound question off of that. What's your thoughts on the overdrive? On the what? The overdrive? MVP's, uh, fuck, I forgot the move. I forgot what he called it. It's like the, um, someone help me here. Oh. No? It, it, isn't it where he gets into a, uh, it's kind of like a Russian leg sweep thing? But yeah, it, yep, that's the one. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I do. I, I, I actually did it. I did it once. I did it to uh, Low Life Louie uh, in a match, and and I was really proud of. It. I, uh, I went to this move, and he's like, "What is it?" And I just, and I just kind of what it was called. Even that shit that MVP does, and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> 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 hey. It, it does the job. If it gets the dub, it uh. And he took it so. Sh- and he took it so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine. All right. Um, if you could have a match with, with a guy like, for example, like Brock Lesnar, what, 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 what will be your mindset heading to head into that kind of match? Uh. <laughs> he tucked my chin, man. <laughs> <laughs> That would be that would be it. <laughs> yeah. it's the name of your podcast. Like, I, I, that's what I'd be thinking about. Tuck your fucking chin. <laughs> Check your neck. Hey, that's. I guess that's the way to go. Steep. <laughs> <laughs> Steep. Uh, over the years of wrestling, you've seen many things change, especially title belts. What was the one belt that had the most meaning to you, the most prestige, whether it's back then or now? Um, that meant the most to me. Uh, I mean, I, I think it was the WWF belt. I think that belt, you know, throughout me growing up, I really, it was the one belt that made me, like, I really cared about who had it. And and honestly, one of the, the, the dude that really made me think that this belt was, you know, extremely meaningful and, and everything was... You know that, that shit was uh, um, was Bret Hart. I think Bret Hart made that title feel like it was real. And you know whether because he he you know thinks wrestling's real. I don't know. I mean, but he made me believe it as a kid, and he and he made me think the importance of having the title. And even as a wrestler, and you know you're like, hey, when you have that title, you're getting paid the most. Um, and that's that's what it kind of really means. There's a reason why you you have that title. Yeah. Yeah. I got uh I got one more and then Antoine and Steve you guys can take it away. How do you keep yourself occupied during uh this quarantine stuff? Uh, I do a lot of drinking. Uh, I've been eating like shit and I just now have been trying to get my act together and uh, working out uh, because I don't have a gym. So I, I've just been uh, I got my buddy owns a like a kettlebell gym it's called willpower um in or pennsylvania and uh, kettlebells and i've been actually learning a lot of different things 
runs with them. So they keep me pretty busy, and, and I've been working out muscles that I, I haven't. So you know, like that's that's kind of changed a lot of you know a lot of everything. Um, other than that, I've been, I mean, dude, I a lot a lot's been happening. Uh, you know, and you can see it on social media. Um, you know, it, it hasn't been a very good time. So I'll be honest, like, like a lot of people, I, I've definitely not been uh, getting that, that I've been getting that real quarantine body and, and feeling like shit and kind of being like everybody I ever make fun of. <laughs> so I think it's karma. Guess so. Guess so, man. Antoine. All right. Um, now in wrestling, so your, your career, have, there, have you ever once ever, like, once your career is over, you know, one day, you know, you consider putting into retirement. Is there any other roles you like to take into take take a part in wrestling? Uh, any other roles, like when I'm done with this? Yeah. Um. Trash CZW. You know, they <laughs> they tried to uh, make me into a an announcer, you know, because they didn't believe in my ability, uh, and they didn't want me to succeed. Um, I did that. Uh, so I, I don't know if I'd want to do that again, just because I have, it has a bad taste in my mouth. Um, you know, I do like to talk, obviously. Uh, I, I, I guarantee that, like, when I'm done with all this and I and I really can't do it anymore, you know, I, I I can see myself trying to be a ref. You know, I have a lot of friends that are that are doing that now, um, and they're doing really really, really well, probably making more money than they did an independent ref. So, you know, I think when my when my ego, you know, finally uh, says, all right, you know, enough's enough, you idiot, uh, then I'll probably maybe go the referee route. Uh, you know, and I don't know. I, I don't think I'll ever be out of wrestling. Honestly, I don't think there's anything that's going to keep me away from it. But, uh, you know, at, at 30, I feel like I have a lot of time um, because I, I don't know, man, I feel pretty, I feel pretty good. Other than, you know, my shitty, like just drinking and just eating like dog shit lately. Like I feel pretty damn good almost all the time. I have no injuries. Um, you know, uh, granted you know with everything that i've taken i don't have any nagging injuries i don't need to take anything i i i did work out but i stretch all the time and, and i'm pretty i feel pretty fucking great so uh i don't even really want to consider that yet uh because that just sounds terrifying that one day i'm gonna get old <laughs> <laughs> steve when you were growing up watching wrestling were you a fan of the Larger than life characters like Undertaker and Sting, or the more down to earth characters. Oh, I, I love uh, I, I love those larger than life characters. I thought the Undertaker was, you know, it, it blew my mind uh, when I was watching him. I, I I he's one of those those you know up until just now did I ever you know see him as did I ever picture him being human? Like I, I they. You know what WWE did now after watching that documentary is is just it's like dude this guy's a real life person and he and he and he feels pain and you know and like yeah obviously I know he feels pain but I never heard it and he never you know went on record about any of that stuff and he was just an indestructible son of a bitch and I I I always really valued that with the Undertaker and um Hold up. We're good. Hold up. Oh, where well, you're back. There you go. Right, for a second. Good. Yeah, you're good. Um, I started getting a uh, emergency thing because I'm driving through the city now. So there's because of riots and everything. Um, but anyway, yeah, like that's so, yeah, I love those larger than life characters, you know, and even up until like independent wrestling, you know, there's there's still those guys, but to a different degree, like. I think Zandig is would be somebody that I consider a larger than life character. I, I think Nick Gage, who yeah, I'm giving him a lot of shit, but he's a larger than life character because I certainly believed him until I didn't and realized that he's just a bitch. But but you know, like 
<laughs> what the fuck are you breaking for, you piece of shit? <laughs> um, holy shit, man. We're in the fucking highway. Come hit your brakes. There's absolutely no reason. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, sir. You, that was it? Or next question? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Antoine. Uh, I have two more questions. <laughs> All right, this this one doesn't pertain to wrestling, but did you, did you play any video, ga- video games growing up? Whether there's anything wrestling or non-wrestling related? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I played, you know, all the wrestling video games, obviously, but, uh, you know, just to get away from it uh my favorite video game like i remember playing as a kid was on sega genesis it was called gunstar heroes um i I think it's it's like it's still like it's one of those games i ever you know decide to plug in my sega or something like that that game's like my my number one go-to um and now you know i I, you know especially during this the, the you know during quarantine and all that um yeah, you know, I've been playing Call of Duty, you know, for for a long time. Uh, I'm not good at it, but I'm all right. Um, and uh, you know, all the Grand Theft Autos and stuff. So I I, I definitely love all the wrestling games, you know, uh, of, of course. But um, just to you know get away from it, yeah, I, yeah, I played it with Gunstar Heroes on Sega, uh, you know, and. You know, again, all the Call of Duties I still play now. Yeah. Steve? Um, so this is also non-wrestling. What type of music do, are you into? Um, I like everything today. Uh, I, you know, like, I, I like rap. To be honest, like, I mean, my, my favorite is, like, my, my favorite shit to listen to is still, uh, is like NWA. Fucking love Ice Cube easy i fucking love that so i i listen to that shit all the time um but i like recently uh i've been putting on like a lot like today's hits or whatever so i've been like listen let me look up what the names are but i like today's top hits i listen to today all the time because i i dude honestly i'm one of those people that like i'll listen to my gym playlist which is like uh, Wild Thing by X and like Triple H's fucking theme song and stuff like that. Like I'll listen to that shit while I'm working out and I'll do that like all day. And I'm like, I got it. I can't listen to this anymore. So you know, I I put on a bunch of different shit. Um, but I, I switch it up all the time. It depends on what mood I'm in. Antoine. Alright, this is my last question. Um, so. Just take hypothetically speaking for myself, I'm li- I'm actually looking to train again to wrestling myself. Um, well, there's there any now me I'm looking to look like, more into like the World Wrestling Alliance, but there's any schools you maybe recommend for anyone that that looking like like myself or anyone particularly you know could start training. I mean, I I definitely I call uh, the H2O wrestling uh, wrestling school like that's definitely. You know, somewhere that I so is a place that I recommend, um, not just because I work there, but because I, I see the care, you know, from from um, uh, you fucking idiot. Don't look at me like you're an idiot. You're a fucking dummy. Uh, um, I, you know, I, I, in particular, I would say that school. Um, Chikara, I've trained there a couple, uh, a few times, and you know, the, you're gonna get crisp with like every move that you're gonna do, 100%. So I, I mean, I certainly, you know, recommend that. Um, you know, the cheeseburger uh, with Ring of Honor, and he's an he's an excellent teacher as well. Um, you know, so those are just a, a few to name. Um, you know, and and they're they're definitely there to, they're gonna make you the best that you can be. Uh, my my thing is is don't assume that because you train there that you're gonna get booked there, because uh, that's never the case. And I'm a perfect example with CZW. Um, and it took me 
a very long time to finally, you know, the finally stop having faith in, in, and uh, and getting out of there, but at least appreciating the things that you learn because they don't want you to, to fail, but they don't, but, but they in particularly don't want you to succeed. Steep, take it away, dude. However more you got. Uh, this is my last one. So, um, eventually, when you know things go back to normal and everything's better, is there any place in the world you would want to travel to, whether it's to wrestle or to have a vacation in? Oh, one hundred percent. I wanna, I wanna go to Japan. Um, you know, I, one of the things and, and goals I've had in, in doing the deathmatch wrestling since I. You know, since I, I first started and I first had my first match, you know, I, I fell in love with it. Um, all of my friends in, in this this little bubble have, have gone. And I'll be honest, I'm jealous and I, I really want to go. I think that I I think I have the talent for it. And I, I think I'd be different. Uh, you know, I think it would be different. And uh that's that's number one where I'd like to go in the United States. I, I've never wrestled in the West Coast, um, you know, and I, and I that's that's the number one place uh, in the United States I would like to go to is California, L.A., uh, you know, and be able to perform there. Yeah. Um. So this is a part of the podcast where we let the guests ask us questions. So if you got anything, fire away. Why the hell did you guys want me to be on your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was like, you know what? This guy's cool, so bring him on. You're fucking hilarious, man. I was actually watching some of your matches. Uh, you versus MJF. That was uh, that was an interesting one. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I because of MJF and and because of uh, Brett Lauderdale is why it's. You know how I got first and my second opportunity at MLW. Um, so I, I definitely owe MJF uh, some credit. Um, I mean, he's one of those guys that I think people criticize with like vet that vets criticize, and all because you know they fucking uh, yeah. They, oh wow, he, he got he's so arrogant and egotistical and he and he got and he got too good too quick and you're just like what the fuck does that mean? Like you know. Get the, you know, get the hell out of here. But uh, I love wrestling him. Um, that was fun. That was funny, you know. But man, does he? He likes to take control of coming up with like a match and a story. Like, oh my god, did I want to rip? I wanted to pull, like, just poke him right in the fucking eyes. But uh, you know, like, Matt, like Max, let me fucking, let me fucking come up with something. Shit, like, <laughs> Christ, you know. But uh. Yeah, he was he's cool always. Um, I guess uh, you know. I mean, I, how long have you guys been wrestling fans, and what made you want to start doing, you know, joining the world of broadcasting? <laughs> Steve, go for it, dude. Uh, so when I was younger, my grandfather he watched wrestling since like you know the 70s and 80s and 60s, and he used to sit me in his lap when I was a baby, and we would watch wrestling all the time. And that's what really got me into it until, you know, I was old enough to really control it on my own. And that's the only thing that's the only thing that, you know, he would basically play in front of me. And I hope one day, you know, I get to be a part of it because, you know, it's the one thing that's helped me. It got me through a lot of stuff and wrestling. It's like you're looking at this another world that you just want to fall into, even though, you know, it's still, you know, it's not like other sports because there's a lot of things different from me and. You know, it's just really something I have passion in. I hopefully want to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, well? I mean, it, it's a, it's a whole nother world, man. And it, uh, like it's, I think it's the, I think it's the best form of entertainment because it has literally everything that you could ever want. Like you could bring any random person that's never watched wrestling. And if you go to a show that has, you know, things that highlight athleticism, deathmatch wrestling, storyline telling or just you know playing out brawling or whatever somebody somebody or one like they're gonna find something in that category you know, or, or comedy they're gonna find something in that category that they're gonna like and then they're gonna want to follow yeah antoine 
For me, so it was like 2011. I was stumbling across TV trying to find something to watch. And next thing I was coming across, I, I came across Monday Night Raw. And then I, I just happened to tune into it. And then from then on, I, was, I, I started watching more of that along with other promotions. And then from that, I, in my mind, it was like, man, it gave me something that I really want to do with my life. Something I want to build a future off of. I developed just this, this, this dying passion for something that, you know, is just different from er- any other elements in the world. You know, you look at other sports, you know, there's nothing that compares to wrestling in any, in any form, you know, because you have, as you mentioned, you have it's characters, storylines, you know, you, you it's it just, it's a whole nother world, you know, just built off of, you know, entertainment and building, you know, creating something just, oh, it's a lot of words for it, I can say that, you know, it's, it's, it's honestly amazing, you know. I st- I literally study, I literally do this. I literally look up wrestling every single day. I look I look at it all the time. Like just just can't keep my my eyes off of it. Just can't stop thinking about it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it is. It's like an every an everyday thing. Like, yeah. For me, um, my dad tried to get me into it in 2011. I was like, you know, what? I can't do this. And then one one night randomly, I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a try. First thing I saw, uh, the shield broke up. So I got into it as soon as they did that long-term storyline. Yeah, and then and then I was like, you know what? Like, why not just watch wrestling? Let's do a podcast about it. It went to just reviewing weeks, having interviews with wrestlers, and uh, it was a dream come true. It was a dream come true. That's good, man. Like, yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. If you got anything else, or we can just go right into outros. Uh, yeah, I, I don't got any more questions, man. That's why I don't do this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, try, I'm, I'm thinking about trying it, but I don't, I don't know how good of it I'm going to be. <laughs> Kit, pl- you go first. Uh, plug whatever you want to, uh, your Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, all that fun stuff. Um, you know, on, I'm, I'm on, obviously I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All It's uh, Kit Osborne. Um, just you have to spell it right. Uh, right now I'm, I'm actually about to get new t-shirts, uh, made and all my Facebook, I literally just made a post cause I need to put something on the back of it. Uh, you guys are going to have to check it out yourselves, share it if you, if you, if you don't mind, uh, I'm trying to come up with what the fuck to put on the back of it and I, I keep drawing blanks. So, and anybody that comes up with the best one that I, I go with, I'll, uh, you'll get a free t-shirt and. You know, and and whatever else. So I, whatever else I come up with, but you know, so that, that's all. I, that's what I got going on. Uh, you know, uh, I, obviously everything that's that's happening with COVID-19 and and uh, these riots and protests, it's gonna be a long time before wrestling starts. Um, I lost one of my really good friends in wrestling uh, just yesterday, Danny Havoc. Um, you know, I, I think you know uh, a- anybody that has any good words about him. Um, you know, please post it, you know, and keep his uh, memory uh, going for, you know, as long as, as, as long as he can. Um, he's one of the best, if not, if not the best uh, deathmatch wrestler out there and one of the smartest, um, smartest individuals I've ever met, which you never would have thought, you know, that somebody, it, it was su- he's such a genius and very articulate. Um, I would most definitely never argue with him via text. Uh, because when I, anytime I read anything from him, uh, he is way too smart for me. Um, and you know, so it, it's something that you wouldn't have thought, uh, would go with somebody who is a deathmatch wrestler. And then also one of the, I, I would, I would most certainly call him a genius. Uh, so, you know, set, sending him some love would be, uh, that'd be very important to me and I'm sure all of his friends and family. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I, I'm gonna put a little idea for the back of your shirt. Don't break on the fucking highway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, people were breaking in front of you, so stop fucking breaking. Something like that. Don't, don't break on the fucking highway. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean. I, I like that one. <laughs> hey, let me know. I will. You'll, you'll know when you get a t-shirt. <laughs> Antoine. Well, everybody, thanks for joining us. <laughs> it was definitely a fun, entertaining interview with with Mr. Kid Os- Osborne here. You know, it's been 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 a great host, 
great guest here. Excuse me. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for joining. You can follow me at the, at the True Ant One, as well as follow my good buddies here, Steve and Mike, as well as Mr. Kid Osborne himself. So yeah. till the next time, thank you. Steve. Thanks, guys. Take care, all right? Yeah. Steve. Let's plug this. Guys, you know what it is. Tuck Kitchen Podcast. Follow us on our socials at Kit Osborne, at The Truant One, at Mike.Shift, and Mike Shift Spam. Listen to our other podcast, The Mock, The Mosh Cast. Also, also follow me at I'm Steep on Instagram and at I'm Real Steep on Twitter. Follow us at Tuck Kitchen Podcast and at Your Tuck on Twitter. You know what it is. Help us grow because we're going to be number one. Also, we are now on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Music. Follow us oh, wherever shit. you go. Whether you're on the highway breaking for some reason, whether you're in the shower, <laughs> whether whether you're making love, whether you're doing anything, <laughs> whether you're jumping out of an airplane, whether you're parachuting, playing at the protest, playing everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, thanks, guys, for watching. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, follow all of us on Instagram. All our Instagrams will be in the bio below description whatever it's called and uh keep tucking your chin guys that's all i gotta say